Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. Okay, as Joey said, we're going to go through um, the Uni Negative Pressure Black Foam Dressing Kit um, and its uses. And today we're going to concentrate on offloading. Um, so I do want to show you here um, the Black Foam the black kit foam kit is a sterile kit. Um, it comes with your black foam, which is hydrophobic, meaning it does not really like water. Um, it comes with the uni drape, one, two, three uni drape, a suction dome, and a uni adapter. And here is everything in the kit. So you can see the one, two, three drape, which is very easy to cut. The black foam, here's your dome, and here's your adapter kit. Okay, so if you're a clinician on or a salesperson, I'm going to try to speak to both, but this is the basics of what you're going to want to bring to the room. So you're going to have some type of an irrigation solution, normally normal saline. Of course, these are bullets. I think it should be much bigger. Um, so you have adequate um, ability to actually irrigate out the wound, especially if this tunnels and undermining. Some type of a skin prep per the facility's protocol, a measuring device, a pair of scissors. I always think it's great to bring um, a flashlight, maybe some four by fours or something like that, um, so that you can actually get in there, see the wound, and then you can dry the peri wound so you'll get an optimal um, stick as far as the transparent drape goes. Inspecting the wound, of course, is the first thing. You want to assess the wound and determine if it's even appropriate for negative pressure. Um, you're going to assess the wound with every single dressing change. And it's important that for any salespeople that I do have on here, um, every single wound is different. Um, so at no time can we actually say, oh, yes, that wound can use it. Um, there are many, many things that need to be determined before the actual decision is made for negative pressure. Um, of course, that's through a doctor's order as well. Um, but the nurses should be assessing to see if it really is appropriate, if there's anything that might hold it off and delay it um, for a little while before it's able to be started. They want to do, again, per their facility protocol, some type of a wound prep, um, getting the wound ready for healing. Um, and again, they want to definitely efficiently irrigate that wound to remove any foam fragments or any debris that is in that wound. Now here, we're offloading. Um, so we're going to clean the wound. Um, if we had two wounds, of course, we'd be cleaning both wounds. But here, we're mostly going to talk about offloading. So it'd be to move the dome to an area that would not be laid on by the patient. Um, all right, so we're cleaning the wound. We're making sure we're irrigating all the areas we're going to dry the peri wound off so that we'll be able to get the optimal stick. Um, we're going to apply that barrier as well. Sometimes it's good to actually put a transparent barrier around to further protect the peri wound. And again, that's all um, decided by what the patient situation is, how fragile the skin integrity is of the peri wound. But we want to promote definitely greater adherence of the transparent drape at this point. Now we're going to measure the wound. And usually a protocol is usually once a week that the wound gets measured um, so that they're able to document everything about the wound. Here, again, we're protecting the peri wound area. And we'd extend that protection out as far as needed to where our drape will go. Um, so since we're actually going to be creating a bridge, um, wherever we create the bridge, we would be using skin prep or something that would be the protection mode of the skin. Um, okay, so what we're doing here is, and again, I will say, because I've been asked a few times, um, this is a wound butt, so it's for demonstration purposes only. Where I'm um, actually bringing wounds to is just to try to make it work on the wound that I, on, on the demo butt that I have. So um, it may not actually be how it would set up on a patient. 
um, and also certain wounds such as this has a lot of eschar, this would normally not be done with negative pressure until that's taken care of. Um, but this is again for demo purposes only. So here we're preparing the skin. The idea is that the patient might be laying on this area. They shouldn't be laying on it, but the patient may be turning on it and may be an inconvenient area to have a dome. So the idea is to bring a bridge over so that we're able to offload maybe onto the front of the hip or something like that with the dome. So this is preparing the skin. We've already applied the protective barrier and now we're actually placing drape so that the skin integrity is protected. And here we are placing it. And there we go. So we now know that our dome is going to sit somewhere around this area. Okay, this is the unifoam. So this is the black unifoam. I mentioned before this is a hydrophobic foam, meaning it does not retain water, it doesn't stay soaked. Um, it is a very good, um, the exudate will pull through this and then easily out in um, to the pump, into the canister. Um, you're going to cut the foam to the size and the shape of the wound dimensions. And for shallow wounds, sometimes we're dealing with very shallow wounds, you may actually end up filleting a little bit off in certain areas. Um, maybe one side of your wound is deeper than another. So you're actually creating um, a template of some sort so that the foam will fit into the wound in the best, in the best way possible. Um, here we're cutting the black foam. It's pretty easy to cut. I always tell everybody get a great pair of scissors, cut away from the wound so no fragments will fall into the wound. And then I just, I'm gloved, I'm in, you know, definitely of the highest clean mode I can be in. I want to brush off that before inserting it into the wound bed. Now here we're using black foam, but there is the potential um, that there may be an area of undermining or tunnel where you would be using the white foam, which is actually hydrophilic. Um, it likes moisture, so it's a great thing to be able to put down in a tunnel or in undermined areas. Again, once assessed, it can't be used in everything. Um, so that would be a nursing assessment on those things. Um, but here, if you notice, I've cut the black foam and the black foam is a little bit higher. So this is my main wound. Um, and I want to fill the cavity without overlapping onto the intact skin. You don't want the black foam touching. But here I've skin prepped. I may actually have put some drape again to just further protect. So we're placing it gently in. We're not forcing the um, foam into the cavity. Um, and that's very important because we do not want to cause any damage to any of the tissue. Okay. Now what we've done here is we have, as you can see, we have the transparent drape down and we have the black foam bridge. I've actually filleted it down just a little bit, made it a little bit thinner. Um, and I've cut a piece of black foam. You could cut it in a circle, a square, so that my dome is going to be able to sit on this area nicely. Now what I'm doing now is I'm taking my unidrape and I'm deciding where I need to cut my hole. If I was just treating this wound, then my hole would be cut over in this area, but I am bridging over to offload. So I'm gonna cut a nickel size hole approximately right here. I can trim any drape away so I'm not using an excessive amount of drape. Um, and here I am cutting the whole. Um, some clinicians actually lift the drape up and sort of snip in once the drape is on. I prefer to figure out where I'm going to need to cut sort of by a template and then I fold it in half and I just cut it that way. It's a nice clean cut. Nothing rips. Um, okay so here's my hole in my uni drape. 
And now I think this is probably one of the easiest drapes I've worked with. It's a one, two, three system. And if it's done right, the nurses will never have an issue with it sticking to their gloves. Um, it should work very well. So here I'm peeling off number one. I'm flipping it over and I'm placing my nickel size hole down in this area. And then all I'm going to do is smooth out around the area. Again, a little too much drape, um, but the drape doesn't always stick really well to the wound butt, so you have to get a little bit um, of extra on there to make everything work. I'm following the curves of my body, and I am not compressing. I'm not putting my hand over here and compressing this down. There's no need to. I'm going to let my negative pressure do that. Now I'm taking off number two from underneath. So on both sides of the transparent, there is an area that you lift this up and you go underneath in this little piece that you just pull out from underneath and smooth down and just make sure your edges are sticking. And on number three, um, if you were able to see the last um, dressing change a few weeks ago, what I do is I show how number three comes off nice and easy by holding this end of the blue tab. And if you can see very carefully, there's a little bit of a serrated edge right there. That's where this picks up from. You don't have to flick the edges. You don't have to do any of that. You just need to pick that third layer up right from there. And it comes off so easily. It's very easy to work with. Pull off my blue tabs. And now peel off the layer, the backing on the dome. And I'm going to make sure that I'm lining this part of my dome, the circle part right here, that's basically the hole that goes into the tubing. That needs to line up right with the hole that I've cut for the nickel size hole in my drape. If they do not line up, then it's not going to work. It's not going to work well. You'll eventually have an alarm going off. Now I'm just making sure my edges, I'm not again pressing up here. I'm just sort of making sure all around here seals. And now there is a serrated edge again on the top of this. This is another little thing that the nurses may not realize they need to do or may forget to do because it looks so, so thin and, you know, at this point right here, it's down. Sometimes the nurse doesn't realize there's a clear top to this that needs to be peeled off. So you peeled off the backing, now you need to peel off the top layer of transparent. So you only have the transparent on there. So at that serrated edge, you're just going to pick it up with your finger and you're going to go right around the whole thing. And that way, this is what you end up with. Take my blue tabs off, that blue tab and that blue tab should come right off. And this is what you have. Now the important thing here is very well-intentioned people want to make sure that this lasts 72 hours. So they take another piece of drape and they start draping all over here. And then you end up getting alarms that might say closed system. There has to be a certain amount of air permeability through this for it to work properly. Otherwise, you're not actually getting any flow of air. The most important thing to do is to anchor your tubing. So if for some reason you look around and you think, wow, I might have a leak over here, you can put a little extra drape. But the idea is one layer of drape is probably the best scenario unless you're just trying, you're in a very difficult spot and you're just trying to make sure that you have a good seal. And of course, we would have trimmed back and not had so much offsite as well if we were working on a person. Okay, so here you can see we've now hooked it up to our negative pressure and it's compressed. It looks a little funny here because it's the picture was taken on an angle, um, but everything has compressed down like a raisin, as you can see. Um, the tubing will then be anchored down. This is just also showing you, we just offloaded, but there's also Y ports that can be used. A Y connector would actually one dressing, to one wound would go here, and then another dressing tube to another would go here. So you would use two kits, treat 
two wounds. Um, the manufacturer says they can treat up to four wounds by adding like another Y port here, and another Y port here. Um, I think again, that has to be assessed on the severity of the wounds, the, how close those wounds are together. And if you missed it, the last one was um, bridging two wounds together. Um, and we'll be showing that again next month. Here we're just putting our connector into our ports. And I don't know if you can see it on here, but there's also a cap. I think it's right here. That's a cap that when you disconnect the patient, you're actually able to, for infection control purposes, cap it off. And But this is a Y port, as you can see, one is going to this side, and then this tubing is going here, and this would be treating two wounds. This is not the offloading one that we just, I, we just wanted to show this, just to show the Y port, the ability to treat two wounds at once. So here, in the next picture, this would just be another way you could treat this wound with one kit, this wound with another kit. You could even have this bridged across. So now you're technically, tr maybe this one's offloading and then you're treating a secondary wound down here. All different ways of doing it. Um, this could be treating two wounds. So there's all different ways to do it clinically. Um, I usually try to talk with the nurses um, and do a quick, like, get a quick information from them um, and try to determine what they think. Um, that is one of our, like I said, if you do, do the series, there's a lot of information in the first two that just give a great deal of information. Um, this is my email. I do love to hear back from people to know what they think, um, what you took from it, you know, where you're calling from, um, and how I can help. So would love to hear from some of you and just get an idea on what you thought. This was a quicker one than we normally do. Um, and we're always coming up with new ideas. So let me know what you think. And thank you very much for joining us today. Bye-bye.